Hi guys! Welcome back to my YouTube channel and for today's video, I'm going to share about cash equivalents. So, in this video also, I will provide um, accounting problems with regards to cash and cash equivalents. So, kung may natutunan kayo from previous video ko about cash and today's video cash equivalents, so, masasagutan nyo ng tama yung mga problems na ibibigay ko mamaya. And of course, I will also uh, provide you the answers and the explanation to those problems. So, let's start! So, first, discuss muna natin yung PAS 7, Paragraph 9, or Philippine Accounting Standard 7, which defines cash equivalents as short-term and highly liquid investments that are readily convertible to cash and so near their maturity that they present in significant risk of changes in value because of changes in interest rates. So, hinailay ko dito yung readily convertible to cash. Um, itong mga cash equivalents na to, most of these are treasury bills, mga securities na uh, pwede na agad i-convert sa cash dahil uh, wala silang uh, masyadong risk kumbaga sa pagtaas or pagbaba ng inter interest rates. So, wala masyadong changes dun sa um, mga uh, investments na to. The standard further states that only highly liquid investments are that are acquired, please note this, three months before maturity can qualify as cash equivalent. So, uh, mga highly liquid investments na uh, inacquire, ibig sabihin, binili or binili yung highly liquid investment na to, 3 months bago yung maturity niya. Bago siya mag -due. So, bibigyan ko kayo na example later on. So, let's proceed to the next one. So, these are the examples of cash equivalents. 3 months BSP treasury bill. So, I highlighted 3 months again. Um, in other uh, problems, accounting problems, may encounter nyo pwedeng 3 months ang nakalagay or 90 days. So, beyond 90 days, ibig sabihin, hindi na siya cash equivalent. Pero, there are some example like this, yung 3-year BSP treasury bill purchase. Ibig sabihin, inacquire, binili, Three months before the date of maturity. Iba yan yung definition ng cash equivalent. Doon sa next, sa last slide. So, dapat nyong, um, dapat nyong kabisaduhin or kailangan nyong wag makalimutan na ang rule na pinor chase or in siya three months before the date of maturity. Next one is 3 month time deposit. So, tulad nung treasury bill sa letter A, 90 days, uh, pwede kasi ganun yung uh, problem. And next one, 3 month money market instrument or commercial paper. Ang money market instrument is different from money order. So, baka karoon kayo ng ma-encounter nyo yun na may money order at saka money market. Huwag kayong malito dun. So, so, gusto kong emphasize sa inyo itong um, itong mga bagay na to kasi mahalaga siya. Um, equity securities cannot qualify cannot as cash equivalents because shares do not have maturity date. So, ibig sabihin in this, wala silang maturity date. Preference shares with specified redemption date and acquired 3 months before redemption date can qualify as cash equivalent. So, nakita nyo na raman yung acquired 3 months before redemption date or yung maturity date niya. So, qualify siya as cash equivalent. 
And next one, BSB Treasury bill that was purchased one year ago cannot qualify as cash equivalent even if the remaining maturity maturity is three months or less. So, pag binili siya one year ago, kahit meron pa siya natitirang um, three months or less bago siya magmature, yung bill na yon hindi siya qualified as cash equivalent. So, nandun yung rule number one, dapat binili mo siya, in-acquire mo siya, pinurchase mo siya three months before the maturity. So, Kasi itong last, last example is binili siya one year ago. So, um, binali na niya agad yung rule na yun. Before I start this slide, I want to remind you again with regards dun sa pag-comprehend ng maigi sa bawat problems or sa bawat binabasa niyo. For example, uh, kung hindi niyo siya maintindihan word by word, or dial English siya, gawin nyo siyang, uh, itagalog nyo siya para uh, maunawaan nyo na mabuti. Kasi mahalaga na nauunawaan nyo yung problem. Kasi once na mali yung pagkakaintindi nyo, pwede siya maka-apekto sa pag-solve nung another part of the problem. So, ayan lang. So, balik na tayo dito. So, next one, investment of excess cash. The control and proper use of cash is an important aspect of cash management. Basically, the entity must maintain sufficient cash for use in current operations. Any cash accumulated in excess of that needed for current operation should be invested, even temporarily in some type of revenue earning investment. Accordingly, excess cash may be invested in time deposit, money market, instruments, and treasury bills for the purpose of earning an interest income. So, ayun, uh, may mga pagkakataon na kapag sobra yung cash mo for your current operation sa tingin mo, uh, sobra siya para gamitin doon. So, ibig sabihin, Pwede mo siyang isave, pwede mo siyang itabi, pwede mo siyang i-invest sa uh, bagay kung saan maka-earn ka pa ng interest, ng dividend, ng other revenue earning na investment. So, in this slide, investments in time deposit money market instrument and treasury bills should be classified as follows. So, dito natin malalaman if cash equivalence ba siya or hindi kung ano yung um, category niya, kung saan ba siya nabibilang, saan siya nakaklassify. So, first, if the term is 3 months or less, so, kapag narinig niyo yan, ano yung nasa tingin niyo? Ano na agad yung nasa isip niyo? For sure, alam niyo yung nasa God. For such, instruments are classified as cash equivalent and therefore included in the caption of cash and cash equivalent. So, tama ba yung nasa isip niyo? Next, if the term is more than 3 months, so more than 3 months na siya, mapapaisip ka. Ngayon ba yung sa definition ng cash equivalent kanina? But within one year, such investments are classified as short-term financial assets or temporary investments. So, hindi na siya cash equivalents, pero consider natin siya as short-term fina financial assets or temporary investment kasi nga, within one year pa rin naman siya. And presented separately as current asset kasi ang current asset usually within one year. If the term is more than one year, so more than na siya, para masyado na siyang mahaba. So kapag masyadong mahaba, uh, ikina-classify na siya as non-current or long-term investment. So, sana nakita niyo yung differences ng 3 months or less. Ibig sabihin, cash equivalent siya, more than 3 months, but within 1 year, so 1 year siya. So, ibig sabihin, short term pa rin siya, current asset. Kapag more than 1 year na, um, non-current asset na siya, long term investment na yun. However, 
if such investment become due within one year from the end of reporting period, they are reclassified. So, kapag mag-due na siya within one year, they are classified, reclassified na siya as current or temporary investment. So, sana na nagat nyo. No? Yan. So, guys, are you ready to solve problem? So, ayan sana. Ready na kayo. And try natin i-apply yung mga natutunan natin from cash and cash equivalence videos dito sa mga slides na to. So, let's start. So, let's start by solving problem number one. On December 31, 2020, Mia Company reported cash and cash equivalents of 3,500,000 and analysis showed the following details. So, yung nakikita niyo sa screen, those are the details of the 3,500,000. But the question is, itong 3,500,000 na ito ba is dama? Talaga bang cash? Lahat ng nakalagay dito is part ng cash and cash equivalent. So, yeah. Um, before I finally discuss the answers and the explanation, first of all, uh, gusto ko lang sabihin na sa lahat ng mag-board exam, lalo na sa first timer, minsan yung mga problem sa board exam is ganito lang kadadali. However, um, yung format niya kakaiba. Like, Ito, medyo malinis pa. Nakikita mo yung buong details, like yung amount. But in real board exam, minsan, kunwari, ang deposit collection, 150,000, kama, cash in bank. So, medyo, um, medyo mahirap mong tingnan yung mga amount, makikita yung amount. So, dapat talagang, ano, um, basahin ng mabuti. And, Ayun. So, parang isa-isayin mo siya para makita mo yung mga, ah, mga, yung mga details. So, ayan. So, lahat, sa lahat ng mga mag-board exam, um, God bless. Pray lang kayo and ayun, fighting. So, let's start. So, simulan natin. Isa-isayin natin siya. So, yung undeposited collection, Tiyatawag din natin siyang cash on hand. So, huwag kayong mali dito. Kapag undeposited, ibig sabihin hindi pa na-deposit sa banko. So, ibig sabihin na sa kamay pa natin siya. Yun lang yun, cash on hand. So, meron tayong 150,000. So, itong undeposited collection, cash on hand, pera natin, ibig sabihin cash siya. So, yung 150,000 is, is kasama talaga. So, i-check na natin siya. Cash in bank BDO checking account. Nasa banko na siya. We know that this is cash. So, kasama siya. Cash in bank BPI overdraw. Do you remember in the last video about cash na ang bank overdraft? Is a current liability. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya asset. Hindi rin siya part ng cash and cash equivalent. However, pwede siya, again, i-remind ko lang kayo na ang overdraft is pwedeng i-offset sa um, same bank. Kunwari, may dalawang account kayo dun sa same bank, pwede niya siyang i-offset dun. So, since dito, wala naman siyang uh, same bank with debit balances, so wala naman sinabi. So, hindi siya kasama, okay? Hindi ko na siya check Next one, ang deposited NSF check. Baka bago sa pa, pa uh, sa inyong paningin ito, yung NSF meaning no sufficient fund, walang pera dun sa banko. Ibig sabihin yung check talbog. Walang pera. <laughs> Na-receive siya from customer. Tayo yung naka-receive. So, ibig sabihin uh, Akala natin meron na tayong matatanggap na pera but unfortunately walang pera yung banko ni customer. So ibig sabihin wala talaga tayong natanggap na pera. So yung 15,000 hindi natin yun isasama sa cash. Receivable pa rin natin siya. So undeposited check 
from customer tayo na raman yung naka-receive kasi galing kay customer. Dated January 15, 2021. Wait lang. Ang reporting date is December 31, 2020. Pero ang date nung check is January 15, 2021. Parang may mali. Na, na parang may nare-recall ba kayo dito? This check is an example of post-dated checks. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, hindi pa natin siya pera. Hindi pa natin kasi siya may encash Kasi may encash pa lang natin siya January 15, 2021. Eh, ang reporting date natin is December 31, 2020. So, ibig sabihin, hindi natin siya cash. Next one, cash in bank BDO fund for payroll. So, ibig sabihin, current fund siya. Cash, so, part siya ng cash. Cash in bank BDO saving account. Part pa rin siya ng cash. Yung mga tiyatabi natin sa bank. So, yan. Cash in bank BDO. Money market. Do you remember this? Parang diniscuss ko siya kanina. 90 days. 90 days is equivalent to 3 months. Right? 3 months. So, ibig sabihin, this is cash equivalent. So, part siya ng cash equivalent. Next one, cash in foreign bank restricted due to exchange control. Restricted. We know that cash must be unrestricted to be able to say that this is cash and current asset. But dapat unrestricted siya. Dapat magagastos natin siya within one year or the reporting period. Hindi, natin, hindi siya restricted when it comes to uh, sa pag-end cash, diba? So, this is no, not part of the cash and cash equivalents. IOUs from officer. IOUs, ibig sabihin, IOU. Ibig sabihin, receivable natin siya. So, this is not part of cash and cash equivalent. Sinking fund cash. This is and I owe use receivable sinking fund cash. Ano siya? Non-current asset? Diba? Long-term investment? So, So, the answer for this problem is pag a add natin yung 150,000, 150,000, 550, I'm sorry, 150,000, 500,000, 150,000, 100,000, 2 million, total of 2 9, or 2 million 900,000. I'm so sorry, hindi ko siya nailagay kasi. So, I will just, just, Try to input it. So, tunay siya. Tama ba? Pag pinag-add siya, yung mga naka-check. One, two. Okay. Tunay. Double rule, guys. Don't forget. So, ayan. So, meron na tayong masagot na isa. So, sana na-gets nyo, di ba? So, next slide. Problem number two. Aldo's company reported the following accounts on December 31, 2020. So, always um, highlight or palagi yung tignan kung ano yung or kailan yung reporting date. Which is dito, December 31, 2020. So, nasa screen naman yung uh, details, yung mga account. Sana mabasa nyo siya na maigay. So, isa-isahin ulit natin siya para uh, masagot tong problem na to. Ang hinihingi dito is adjusting entries on December 31, 2020 at saka i-compute natin yung total amount of cash and cash equivalents. So, first, dito sa equation na to, since may makikita kayong mga ganito, ibig sabihin mga supporting uh, notes yan, supporting notes with regards dito sa mga nasa taas. So, isa-isa natin. Si cash on hand. So, makita nyo dito sa baba, merong cash on hand rin. So, basahin natin siya. 
the cash on hand included a customer post-dated check. So, kapag post-dated check and galing kay customer, so, ibig sabihin, tayo yung nakatanggap ng check, eh. Ibig sabihin, hindi pa natin yung pera kasi hindi pa nga natin ma-end cash dahil ang date niya is um, beyond yung reporting period natin, post-dated. Check siya, di ba? So, ang amount niya is 100,000 and yung postal money order is 40,000. So, yung postal money order, we know that this is cash. Pag money order, cash, money market, cash equivalent maliban uh, if it is acquired 3 months before the maturity date. Okay. So, dito, since hindi natin dapat i-include si post-dated check sa cash on hand, i-minus natin siya. So, ito yung entry niya. Um, accounts receivable, ibabalik mo si accounts receivable, 100,000, and cash on hand, babawa ka sa masika cash on hand ng 100,000. So, ma-minus natin si 100,000 dyan sa 500,000. Meron na lang tayong 400,000 sa cash on hand. Next one, petty cash fund. So, tingnan natin ulit dito sa supporting note kung merong petty cash fund. And makikita nyo, merong petty cash fund dito. It included unreplenished petty cash voucher. 2,000 and employee check for 3,000. Pag sinabing unreplenished, unreplenished, hindi pa siya na uh, babalik, hindi pa na babalik yung pera. And yung employee check considered as receivable. So, this is the entry. Um, debit petty cash voucher, 2,000. Debit employee check, 3,000. And credit petty cash funds, so mababawasan ng 5,000. Itong mga account uh, account name, no? Pwede mag-iba yan, depende sa entity. So, since nabawasan ang petty cash natin ng 5,000, yung 20,000, pag nabawasan siya, 15,000 na lang yung petty cash natin. So, si security current account, makikita nyo yung current. Tapos, titignan natin kung meron siyang supporting notes. Wala naman. So, consider na natin siya as cash and cash equivalent. So, next is PNB current account. Current account number 1. Tapos, meron siyang current account number 2 PNB. Wala siyang supporting notes. So, makikita nyo dito, tiba din discussed ko from the previous review ko with regards to sa bank overdraft that uh, exception to the rule, pwede nga offset siya sa parehas na bank ah, uh, sa parehas na bank kapag dalawa ang account. So, dito, meron siyang account number 1, may account number 2 siya. So, pwede natin siyang i-offset. So, the total uh, PNB account is 350,000. So, next one, treasury bill, BSP treasury bill, and makikita nyo yung 120 days. So, si 120 days, pag kinonvert natin siya into months, meaning 4 months siya, di ba? So, we all know that uh, dapat 3 months lang ang um, cash equivalent. So, this is not part of cash equivalents. Next one, um, time deposit. So, meron siyang supporting document. It is set aside for acquisition of loan to be made in early January 2021. So, here, kahit uh, sabi niya 90 days siya, so, ibig sabihin na uh, na meet niya yung rule na dapat 3 months. So, pwede siyang consider as cash equivalent kung uh, hindi nakalagay dito sa supporting notes niya na it is set aside for acquisition of land. Is, uh, itong, ano, ibig sabihin, restricted siya, di ba? Kasi nakaset aside siya. And for acquisition of land, ibig sabihin, for tendency nito long term, for long term. 
kaya siya restricted. So, this is not included as um, cash equivalent. So, let's add this for 400,000, dapat 400,000 yan. Sorry. 15,000, 1 million, and 350,000. A total of 1,765,000. One so, sana nag-gap siya siya. Sana nakuha niya siya. Um, pwede niyo siyang balik-balikan if hindi niyo uh, makuha agad. Pero, medyo madali lang tong uh, problem na to. So, kaya niya. So, ayan, sana naitindihan niyo. Yung dito, yung offsetting side, di ba? And yung about sa treasury here. Okay, next one. So, next problem. On December 31, 2020, the real company had the following cash balance. So, these are the example. Next, punta na tayo agad dun sa supporting notes. Cash in bank. So, ito si cash in bank. Included 400,000 of compensating balance. So, I already discussed this in my previous video sa cash. So, against short-term borrowing arrangement. So, kapag compensating balance ang pinag-uusapan, uh, titignan natin kung restricted ba siya or unrestricted. So, para, para malaman natin kung part ba siya ng cash. So, in this... Uh, in this problem, the compensating balance is legally restricted as to withdrawal. So, what total amount should be recorded as cash and cash equivalent? So, we already know na hindi siya part ng cash kasi legally restricted siya. So, yung 6 million natin minus 400,000. Sorry, hindi ko siya nasa. 400,000, so meron na lang siyang 5,600,000. So, ayun. Equals to 5,600,000. Sorry guys, if, sana may tindihan nyo. 600,000. Oh my god, what's this? <laughs> yeah. Five, six. So, petty cash fund, wala naman siyang, I don't know, supporting documents. So, 50,000 at time deposit, three months. Three months siya, due on January 15, 2015. So, part pa rin siya. So, saving deposit, part pa rin siya. So, so, pag pinag-add lahat tong mga to, the answer is 9,150,000. Ah, sana naiintindihan nyo siya na double rule, guys. I'm sorry if hindi siya ma-ginaw. So, 5,6 yun na, guys. 9,150,000. So, ang ano lang dito is yung about sa compensating balance. So, so last problem, but they four problems lang kasi yung prepare ko ngayon, guys. So, this problem also talks about yung compensating balance. So, at Alucard Company, the following account balance on December 31, 2020. So, and yung details niya. So, Sa supporting notes niya, cash and bank included 600,000 of compensating balance against short-term borrowing arrangement. So, let's check ulit natin kung restricted ba yung compensating balance. And in this uh, problem, it is not legally restricted as so it was. So, the total amount of cash and bank is still the same. So, ang question dito is what total amount should be reported as cash on December 31, 2020? So, yung cash in bank, napatunayan natin na uh, tama naman siya kasi compensating balance is not risky. 
connected. So, part talaga siya. Sa cash on hand naman, so, ibig sabihin, pera natin yan. Cash restricted to plant in 2015. Oh, dapat 2025 yan. Sorry. So, 1, 6, 1, 600. So, this is restricted. So, hindi siya part na cash natin. So, pag pinag-add natin si 2 million 250,000 sa 125,000, the answer will be 2 million 375,000. So, I wish you understand this. Napaka pangit pong sulat. It was very hard for me. Hindi ko kasi agad. Ah, uh, tinay. So, ayan guys. So, bali dito nagtatapos yung video for cash and cash equivalent. So, I already provided you different problems with uh, kung saan natahan yung different uh, different topics natin about cash, yung about sa post-dated checks, sa treasury bills, sa cash equivalents, no? Compensating balance, offsetting ng bank overdraft. Gusto ko pa sana kayong bigyan ng um, more more, ano, more <laughs> problems. However, gusto ko kasi na every video ko 30 minutes lang sana yung maximum para hindi masyado kayong mapagod yung isip nyo, no? So, uh, I advise you to uh, mag-solve sa reviewer nyo na lang and balikan na lang yung mga notes dito kung ano yung mga natutunan nyo. And, yun nga guys. Thank you ulit sa pag panonood nitong video and hindi ko alam kung may natutunan kayo pero sana meron, di ba? So, ayan. I hope na this COVID-19 pandemic will finally, finally, mawala na. So, I hope you guys learn something from this situation. At the same time, sana value pa rin ang education natin. So, bye guys. Thank you for watching again.